Today, we're going to be cutting out the middleman of the elf sweatshops and just carve this present ourselves this year. You may think you'd need experience or practice with this sort of thing, and well, that's exactly what I intend to find out. Hey there, this is Cap, just a Joe Schmo like yourself trying to save some money this year by making something I have almost no experience with. Now I don't have any fancy workshops or anything, and the garage is incredibly cold this time of year. So what I've done is I've stolen my sister's painting table, and I've placed a tarp on the floor to protect the carpet from sawdust. I don't have any kind of ventilation, so I don't think I have to worry about sawdust getting all over the place, as it should just fall straight down, thanks to the power of gravity. I've casually whittled a few sticks over the years, and I've only cut off part of my finger once, so overall I'd say I'm pretty confident in how this is going to go. I've never really made anything particularly complicated, mostly things like this stick, and this little shield I made several years back using someone else's tools in a workshop. Which is why, this Craftsmas, I want to make something truly special. In my family, instead of buying everybody gifts, we instead draw one name each, and we get a very personalized present for that person. Which is great, because I'm chronically broke. Millennial moment, am I right, fellow 90s kids? And so, with all of that in mind, we're going to really push my ability, or lack thereof, to its absolute limit to make the best gift I am capable of. But first, I hear it's important to maintain your tools, so we're going to start with sharpening a knife, which I've done maybe twice in my life, so I think it's going to go great. First thing you're going to want to do is get a whetstone. Now, contrary to popular belief, the stone itself isn't actually naturally wet. You have to add the wet. Somehow, this magical stone sucks up the water like a sponge, which allows the stone to, uh... Um... Next, let's select the knife we want to use. I was thinking about this one, because I just think it's neat. But frankly, I think the curve of the blade might get in the way, so maybe not. I've also got this one, which suddenly appeared one day in my box of knives, and I've never really been able to get rid of it. It whispers dark secrets to me, which is pretty cool but it might get distracting. So instead, I'm gonna use this knife here, which was designed for this kind of thing, really. I've had this for many years, and I've used it for a variety of handy tasks, such as sharpening pencils and cutting rope, sometimes even making campfire tinder. But these sort of things are really taxing on a blade's sharpness, so we wanna freshen this bad boy up before we start. Let's try sharpening the knife. I'm pretty sure this is the right way to do it. It's actually more dull now. Maybe it's the other way. No, no, that's still dull. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to watch a YouTube video about how to sharpen a knife. Now, what's interesting is that every single video that I've watched does it differently. So that doesn't really solve my problem, but overall, it looks like all you have to really do is just do it until it works. So let's get going. How'd that get in there? Okay, I think we've gotten to a decent point here. I'm not going to pierce armor with it or anything, but it seems like it'll cut wood. So I think we're good to go. Now then, let's set up our project. As it turns out, there is apparently a small man imprisoned in this cube here. I don't know what he did to deserve this, but I'm thinking it's time to once again release him upon humanity to enact his revenge. Before we do that though, I feel like it'll be a good idea to draw it out first so that I'm not just improvising it. I'm just going to do a rough sketch for now though so that I don't get caught up in trying to do a perfect match and end up being disappointed with the result. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get to work. At first I tried to commit to the whittling, uh, but soon I realized it was going to take me a very long time this way. This is when I remembered I actually owned a few chisels that I haven't used yet. You may have noticed a slight problem though. The block seems to move around whenever I hit it with stuff, which is unfortunate, but I think I can counter that. Let's try a few different tricks to try and hold the brick in place while I work. Now, if you're like me, you prefer to find unique solutions to problems instead of simply buying things. 
So the next thing I did was I purchased this used table clamp from a nearby hardware store. Because this table isn't mine, I'm going to be extra careful to make sure the clamp doesn't damage it. I think this little piece of cardboard should do the trick. It was about here that I realized the angle of my camera was absolutely horrific. And also every time I hit the chisel, the camera would shake like a found footage film. As I've been working, I found that chiseling is uh, actually very hard, and I keep taking too much off the block. Fortunately, I got really big blocks just in case I needed to leave room for mistakes, which is a good way to live life, really. Any well-laid plan can go wrong, but if you make sure to leave yourself room for some error, some self-forgiveness, you'll generally make it through. It's coming along pretty well, but the hardest part is coming up removing the excess. Because of the angle I need to work at, I can't just hammer away at it or else I'll break it. That said, unfortunately for me, I'm very impatient and I ended up taking some shortcuts, some of which weren't particularly safe. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the great irony of this situation was that Cthulhu Seeker's remix of Mog, Lord of Blood, was playing in the background at that very moment. One thing to always keep in mind is that whenever you're working with sharp tools, you always want to be aware of where you are at. You don't want to be in the path of the blade, or you might end up hurting yourself. But overall, in the end, without any major injury, I've managed to get a rough shape figured out. At this point, we've reached the place where I normally choose to stop. That is to say, it's finally time to work on the small details. But first, we should clean up our workspace. Much better. Now while looking for sandpaper, I found these really neat sanding sponges, which I had never really seen before, but I thought they might solve my usual problem of having extreme pain in my weak gamer hands. Now, you may be thinking, Cap, you're wearing a mask to protect your lungs from sawdust, right? The answer to that is no. I did not think of that, and I certainly paid the price for that mistake. <laughs> However, if you're like me, and you are deathly allergic to anything particulate, you may find that this other handy trick that I use to be mildly helpful. All you do is take a single square piece of toilet paper, jam that up into your nasal passages like you're trying to embalm yourself for mummification, and just like that, you are totally safe from sneezing, and uh, also breathing. Now I spent a lot of time sanding and fine-tuning this figure. I ended up over sanding one of his hands, and it no longer looked the way I wanted, but since I can't just re-add the dust, I'm going to have to take a dose of copium and move past it. I also spent hours trying to make the legs look right, although I think that was the right choice. As any anime fan will be able to tell you, smooth thighs are what makes for a good character. I'm going to try some wood burning next. Just like the last phase, it's a good idea to plan this out. I was thinking of doing a little stream or river that he would just be sitting above, but turns out drawing minimalistic streams is very hard, and there are surprisingly few good examples online that I could steal from. Every sketch I made just kind of looked more like wood. Now I was just going to do this in my room also, however, as it turns out, my window was completely frozen shut, meaning I would have no ventilation, and I'd likely set off every fire alarm in the house. Perhaps I'll work in the garage after all. Hmm. Six minutes. Oh, I can feel it. Second thought. Let's work here in the laundry room. It's got a nice small window and a nice little counter. I can fit everything here, including a fan to clear the smoke. Now, I don't have the right kind of mask for this, but I've been inhaling wood smoke since I was just a small scout, so I wasn't too worried. But safety is still important, and I did have a thick cloth mask from the pandemic. 
the instructions say that it takes several minutes to warm up, so I'm going to just leave this unattended for a bit and make myself a sandwich. Now, to my immense disappointment, someone in this house thought that Kraft Singles were a type of cheese, but if you weren't aware, it's actually a form of poison, which was designed to be used in rat traps so that you didn't waste any real cheese. But from years of poor financial choices, I've actually developed an immunity to it, so I'll survive. While the cable is a bit tedious and in the way, I think I've got an overall handle on how this works, so it's time to start working on the piece. It didn't turn out how I envisioned, but overall I think the concept comes across, so we're gonna move on and try this mask. Oh dear, no, that... that doesn't look like how I planned at all. I could try sanding it out and staining the mask instead, but the sunk cost fallacy isn't real, so I'm just gonna double down and commit to the burn. Perhaps it'll look better with a few blasts of... Nice! with a few blasts of clear coat. Um, it's sticky. I don't know if I understand how this all works. I needed to come up with a way to attach it all together, but all the stores are closed, and the only thing I could really find in the garage was this gigantic bolt. With these drills, I really need to be extra careful, because if I mess up, I'll break this figure straight in half, and that'll be a hard mistake to fix. Additionally, I'm going to have to traumatize my little friend here. I'm, I'm so sorry. It's for the greater good. Just, uh, just think happy thoughts. Overall, I'm not super happy with how the burn turned out. It looks like I just drew on it with Sharpie. Fortunately, I found a tool that might just help. I'm just going to use this stick of whiteout to erase my mistakes. Let's just make sure it works first. Okay, actually, it's empty. Oh, you know what? This might do the trick. There. Now I can pretend it went exactly as planned. Now that we've permanently bound this lad to the log for all eternity, it's time to add some fun little details. I grabbed these twigs from a tree, and I think I can do some fun stuff here. Now I don't think I have bolts small enough for this, so I'm going to try glue instead. In the past I've had great success with paper crafts with this quality stuff. And wood is just raw paper, you know? But, 
As it turns out, they make something similar just for this kind of project. Bam! Wood glue. Let's test it out first before we commit. Okay, now I just gotta hold it for a bit. Okay, it's uh, not drying out. Let's read the back and see how long it takes. 30 minutes? Nah, no, bro. No. After digging around the first aid cabinet, I found some super glue. Unfortunately, the super glue has super glued itself closed, and I can't get to that magical compound that violates the laws of reality. That's okay. Let's just destroy the bottle. That won't have any future consequences, I'm sure. It seems to hold pretty well. So, fun little fact, superglue instantly dries against flesh, which makes sense as to why it's used for first aid, which is neat. However, I don't like the way it feels, so I'm just gonna sand it off, which definitely won't hurt, don't worry. You may be curious about this little fella's design, and actually he's a character I've been working into various forms of media for quite some time. I don't know, it's something about the lack of expression that makes him seem so very tranquil. Now for the finishing touches. I dug through my other sister's craft supplies without asking, and I found this neat little box of tags. This one I thought was kind of funny, because it sort of looked like the to be continued tag from JoJo, but also just says okie dokie for some reason, which fits my whole mood for this project. Whatever happens, it's all okie dokie. Despite my worries and unfortunate mistakes, I really liked how this turned out. It's not particularly complex, and it's a bit rough around the edges, but I had a lot of fun, and overall, that's what's most important about trying new crafts or skills. It doesn't matter if you're good at it, what's important is that you enjoyed it, and you learned something that you didn't know before, which is also really the entire vibe of this channel. I want to see what an amateur with zero training and minimal experience is capable of, what we, as regular Joe Schmoes, can do when we set ourselves to it at the very last minute. Procrastination is the catalyst for ingenuity and acceptable risk. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me throughout this, and I hope you have a very wonderful, non-specific seasonal holiday, whether it be Yule, Hanukkah, Christmas, or ritual sacrifice to the gods of harvest. I think it's wonderful that we can all come together this time of year, this time of day, located entirely within my kitchen, to enjoy a good craft or two. That's it for today, Schmoes. I've been Joe, and I'll see you next time on Cap and Can't Craft. Oh, and don't forget to bell that like and comment your subscriptions and hit that notification card to donate to my patron, the all-powerful Lord Cthulhu.